Thank you so much. Thank you, Shiva. Well, good afternoon. It's an amazing event, very dynamic environment, and we are happy to be here, part of this blockchain summit. I'm here, as Shira mentioned, to share our vision, to share our project, and how we are progressing in this new mobility ecosystem. Let me start with the picture of the automotive industry. This picture will not be looking the same in 10 years because there is a tremendous transformation ongoing and this transformation is disrupting the way automotive were used to do business. And the reason is simple. The reason is your expectations as user, they are changing. The technology enables that we are getting more and more used to smart devices and with the digitalization itself, we are having the opportunities we are used to have normally in our homes, in our living rooms and in our offices to do the same in the vehicle, in the smart device. So we are talking about this transformation also as a similar transformation which used to be with the smartphones in the past and this is happening right now for the vehicles as well so the smart device turning into a living space if you look if you consider the overall picture of the industry we see that if we would like to take this transformation proactively or not that this change will come driven by the mega trends on the technology side on our social lives and social behavior side and also on the side of the regulatory bodies trying to help trying to incentivize and even support the and even protect the industries so and here the blockchain as a technology plays an essential integral role and this is where we are also seeing the opportunities where do these opportunities come from thanks to the digitalization and connectivity and iot we have lots of great solutions compared to 10 years ago most of them they are island solutions they are solutions within the silos and these solutions do not talk to each other and do not permit exchanges in a proper safe and secure manner means again for you and ourselves as a user the user experience is disconnected it's not seamless and with the smart contracting, we see a tremendous potential to have improvements and to create synergies there. And that's why we consider our approach as being more than simple a smart device. It is the mobility ecosystem and within this ecosystem, turning opportunities for as value for users. So let me grab this picture to make it black and white what we mean and where do we differ as talk from our perspective compared to what we call the old league that if I make it black and white the internal combustion engine world the the car since 150 years as they have been being used and on the other side the new league where the users is in the focus and the user values in the focus and Smart device is in the internet with either components, subcomponents, or systems, and not the other way around with the, via a GSM that the internet is in the car. So on the other side, it's already a hygiene factor to have all the air updates, cloud computing. This is also necessary for the uh, ADAS functions which we are having and facing in our smart devices. On the other side, horsepower is nice, Processing power on these smart vehicles is much cooler because at the end, this is what makes the difference in speed and safety and security together with the blockchain and cybersecurity. So moving from this picture to the classical process. Look, this is what the classical world does to design a car. There's a concept, there's a product development, there is on the other side, the manufacturing and maybe some 
sales and after sales and financial services. And this is being modified with the so-called case connectivity, autonomous driving features, and shared and electrified alternatives. This only defines the technology. Therefore, we were looking for the differentiation points. And this is from our perspective, how we can make the smart device, a, not only a smart one, but also an empathic one. How can this happen? This is something which understands us, which complements us, and this is also as a companion helping and supporting and assisting us. This is what we mean with the use case, the capital letters of these letters. We have registered this, and this is our vision. We are a global use case mobility provider, and this global use case mobility providing is, from our perspective, focused in five verticals. Those five verticals, starting with the smart grid, since this is an electrical uh, <coughs> driven car, smart grid and smart charging, and on the other side, data-driven business is the core of our business model. For this, we need business partners, suppliers like the traditional ones, on the other side, business partners like the startups, and continue with providing solutions like intermodal mobility services and going up to smart living solutions in smart cities. I mean, if we are living in big cities, we all know and we all face what it means to stand in the queue, in the traffic, or the stop and go uh, <clears throat> traffic, which costs us days and even more than days. It, typically in Istanbul, it's six and a half days. We are standing still and another six to seven days, which are stop and go. So seeing this is not enough. We have to define, divide our target into two. The first one, as already mentioned, is the smart device part. This is being now designed, this has been prototyped, this is being now tested, and in the first quarter of next year will be launched into the market. The second goal we are having is our mobility ecosystem. This is a publicly accessible, user-centric mobility system, and I'd like to share here what the blockchain technology here will contribute to our business. Again, we need from the smart vehicle side what we call the electric, electronic architecture, which is the hardware on one side for the smart devices and the software on the other side for the digital platform. So all the data, all the information we need and we will encounter through the journey of the user throughout the uh, contact points, user touch points, is being stored safely and securely there. On the other side, already mentioned that we have the need of a different collaboration model. And that is alliances, that is collaboration on the same eye level with startups. They have the ideas. We all know that in seven, eight years' time, the share of the innovation coming from the startups will be more than 70, 80 percent in the sector. Today, it is coming from the corporate companies with 70%. On the other side, we need, with the startups, which are quite agile and innovative, the same mirrored into our organization. We have an agile team, we have an agile organization, and by the way, since three and a half years, since our foundation, we are not having one organization chart. We are working in work streams, we are working in agile teams, and this gives us the necessary flexibility, speed, and agility. So, then blockchain. The blockchain, as already mentioned in the second slide, is for us the basis for smart contracting. It's for us the basis for creating additional synergies, and our blockchain platform will be named Token, which is also registered. So, what will this token or the blockchain platform bring us. So it's an integral part of the smart devices. Right from the beginning, we have the chance, we have the opportunity to design on a white paper the entire system, and that's why also our services from navigation to the uh, uh, TOC ID will be working on this. The smart contracts will 
enable the efficiency and the integration of our business with our business partners in the ecosystem, with dozens and hundreds and later thousands of business partners. And by this manner, we'll be able to transfer in a safe, secure, and a fast manner the digital assets. And this will further continue with the tokenization. Of course, as long as the legal framework is given in the specific countries with further functions and further services for our users. So, in this picture, we see on the left side what is necessary and on the right side, what is the probable outcome. And from our perspective, this is our roadmap, how we approach it. From peer to peer, from a decentralized approach to vehicle to X, X to X connectivity, and also forming our and shaping our talk community in order to give, give a seamless service, in order to give a real-time and on-demand and personalized services and features and functions for our users. You may have realized we are not talking anymore about customers. You do not need to be a customer of us. It is the user what we are putting into our center, and this is also the facet, the perspective, which makes also the difference because the users will be using our features. Some examples, what may change and what will change and where we will be doing the differentiation from our perspective with the smart contracts. Starting with the supply chain logistics. I will jump from here to the carbon footprint. It will give you a precise carbon footprint de depending on your configuration of your car. We don't have it today. We have it only on a corporate level. I'm pretty much sure, we are pretty much convinced that the green credits will be going also into the retail and based on this, based on the footprints, you may get different offers, different functions. Tracing the past of your vehicle, it might be a health check, it might be the ability how the car has been used on its status. This is something which is absolutely necessary, especially after the mass production ramp up. Then similarly, the digital ID, the digital password, we can separate it, the personalized things, which is uh, based on sanitized data and on the other side, based on the expected life of the uh, components. And last but not least, the maintenance and the third party vendors collaboration. These are things at the end which gives us the efficiency, which gives us the speed we need and which gives us the safety and security. We all know that the data we own as a user and the data we share as a user during a mobility journey is extremely important. And one of the ways to keep this data in a secure way is a blockchain platform. Why did we decide to go this way? And what was for us, from our perspective, the decision criteria while selecting our blockchain technology partner? First of all, the scalability is important. Just imagine having dozens of and hundreds of and thousands of utility functions in the ecosystem. Zero or extremely low user costs for the transactions, the speed of the transaction, the reliability of the technology. I mean, we started October 2020 in understanding, identifying the technology, and it took us a while to understand the maturity level is not that high with the alternatives we had. And at the end, considering also the energy efficiency, we decided to collaborate with Avalanche, with Avalabs. This we have announced, disclosed during the CES, beginning of the year, and we have in our roadmap, after having finalized our white paper, that we do go stepwise in fine-tuning and rolling out, out of our blockchain platform. I would like to thank you. I'm not sure if there are some questions allowed or not.
I just see from my screen, there are a few minutes, just looking to the organizers. Yes? Okay. Any questions? Um, thanks for the great presentation. Where are you with uh, the execution of that roadmap that you just walked us through? You mean from the blockchain technology part? Yeah. So this is uh, something we are right now working. The white paper is ready. And from the white paper on, what we are right now shaping is how we fill the utilities, because at the end, we would like to put the utilities into the front. And we are working on this. And uh, with the, um, I think towards of mid of the year latest, we will be also disclosing all the details regarding the utility functions. Some more questions?